What's up everybody? I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Before we get into the messages, make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe as well to prepare for what is coming on my channel. I hope you guys are enjoying all the videos and hey, it's, it's much more, much, much more to come. I love y'all. Have you ever tried to bargain with God of the calling on your life? For example, God will tell you to do something, right? And you're a little uh reluctant you're a little uh, uh, uh you have some resistance to what god is calling you to and it's like for me i just sit there it's like god you really calling me like i'll hear god and i was like okay i hear you and i keep on moving i keep on moving i hear him again it's like all right all right god i heard you first huh <laughs> i heard you the first time why, why why are you still calling me like it's somebody else over there and for me I, I i downplay what god can do in my life and i know god <laughs> like I know like God like the back of my hand because like of the my testimony in the in the years of walking with God, but still I'm hesitant. Like I still am sitting there like God, like why are you calling me to this? Like I'm not that great, but then I do great things because God is doing it through me, and it's like I'm still in that same place. I don't know if you are, but I am. And then recently, it's just the different things that God is is doing through my life. It's like, okay, God, like I I see you, like because I made this small effort, you're moving all these mountains that I thought was impossible. And it might be the case for you. Maybe talking to a CEO. For me, it was leaders in the school. It was like, man, how can we make this initiative? How can we make this change? And I I for for myself, I thought my voice is too small. And that's where we find Gideon. So the, uh, a little backstory to what's going on for the Israelites. After uh, Joshua was, lead, was leading them, they they was, hey, the Israelites, they, they were still disobeying. And God sent them, uh, uh, he was saying, like, other nations are going to take over, right? And that's where we find ourselves in the book of ju Judges. And Gideon was one of these judges, but where we find him is not in the hero seat. We find him in the line press, pressing grapes, scared of the Midianites. And God co comes to, to Gideon and is like, hey, like, bro, like, you about to do some great things. Like, I need you. And Gideon, like many of us, is like, man, why are you calling me? And it's easy to push down these characters until you place your lives in these characters' stories. Because I'm Gideon. It's like, God. You had to prove this to me first. Like, move this over here and, like, you know, make the, 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 the ground dry and the sheep wet and do the reverse for me to see that it's really the, you. I know you. But, like, hey, like, let me just slow this down a little bit. Let me slow this process down. And God, he's not going to force us into something, but he's going to still pursue after us. Not for our benefit, but for him to get the the glory, to get the victory. And then through that, he's showing us, it's like, hey, you're capable. You're capable of this. And I'm not going to let you off the hook. I'm going to continue to push you in places where you have to lead. You have no choice. If you're going to follow me, that's going to be the trajectory. Yes, you can be uh, comfortable. But in that, I'm going to make you uncomfortable by putting you in all these new places. And then in Judges chapter 7, is powerful because Gideon is at that point where I was. And many of us are where it's like you have all these people. It's like, man, you got everything. It's like, God, thank you. I got the tool. I got the tool. I can do this. And then God downsized everything. Gideon had 32,000 men. But 22,000 did not want to fight. And I'm pretty sure Gideon was like, okay, I still got 10,000. Right, we good. We straight. And then it was another test. So they went to this water, right? And God told Gideon, whoever laps up water like a dog, send them home. And whoever drinks it from their palm, hey, keep on. And this is where I want to park in our meshes. Because in this illustration of uh, drinking from the water, God is showing us that we have to be forward thinkers. Because if you think about it, if you drink of water like a dog, you're on all, all, all fours, your legs and your, and your hands, and all you're seeing is straight down. You don't see anything that's happening around you. 
And that's a lot of times it's happening where we're going through the motions. We don't see the t a text, not not just physically, but spiritually. We don't see how how going too far to the left is pulling us away from the God, from God, or going too far from the right is pulling us away from our families. And it, it is very deep in that. But what we have to do, we have to drink water from our hands and be. Uh, aware of what is going on around us, where God is leading us, because yes, it might be difficult. Yes, it, it, it is life. It, life is not easy. Life is not a cakewalk. But when you are aware of what God is doing in your life, when you're actually moving for his calling, then you'll be more capable to fully step into the callings of your life. I hope this message blesses you all today as it has for myself. Get out of the wine press and go forward to the calling of your life. Be the hero in your own story. I love y'all. Until next time, again, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and prepare for more. Peace.